KTN News. Get the whole story. Good morning to you and welcome to Morning Express. My name is Trix Ingado. Today on the show, we shall be taking a look at some of the very latest stories that are making headlines in press review. We shall be looking into the papers and finding out how the Kenyan press has been prioritizing various events that have been unfolding here in the country. Also, we shall be taking a look at international news later on towards the tail end of the bulletin. We shall focus on what's happening beyond our borders and the very interesting dynamics of politics we shall have a special panel of analysts that shall be helping us dig deeper into the direction that Kenya is taking politically. But to kick us off, let's take a look at some of the international papers and what international agencies have been prioritizing. Now, we start off in the region with the Daily Monitor. Now, two confirmed dead in another explosion on a passenger bus. Unfortunate news right there coming out of Uganda. An accident right there. They're also giving us a tally of coronavirus pandemic infections in the region. We are leading with 251,057, while you got, while um, that has to be Tanzania in the tail with 25,957 infections. So they are keeping up as they now give out their data. Let's move on and see what is uh, also being covered by the Daily Monitor this morning. The Daily Monitor is also telling us about bail reforms. Is executive putting cart before the horse? Find out the process that of that and of those ongoing reforms. And also there are claims of responsibility for deadly Kampala bombing. Very interesting news there coming out of Kampala. Not very positive right there. Let's also take a look at some more news right there. We have Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, the general who leads Sudan. That is after that coup that happened yesterday of course this is after they were struggling to get civilian civilian rule in place now there seems to be a problem in terms of the military letting go and now they have taken over yet again let's move on to the citizen and see what's making headlines this morning in tanzania the leading story on the citizen agency's website is tanzanian farmers state reason for selling coffee in uganda this is how this has to do with exportation and of course they're looking for the best market for themselves uganda seems to be the one to go for right now let's move down and see what's making headlines also in tanzania Ndaishimie allows the rule of CRDB Bank right there, Adar Port and SGR in ties. Also, we are told health experts voice concern over new coronavirus variants. Now, health experts in the country, that is Tanzania, are concerned that efforts to fight COVID-19 may prove difficult due to emergence of new coronavirus. Find out why the latest was the Delta variant that was actually even resistant to some vaccinations but now there is concern as a new variant of the COVID-19 virus uh, emerges and of course experts will have to keep up with modern medicine in order to be able to tackle with what new challenges this new variant presents. Moving on, let's take a look at Rwanda today. It tells us this morning, Sudan coup, U.S. threatens to cut off aid. Sudan was gripped with an uncertainty after military agents detained the prime minister. His name is Hamdok right there. And of course, as you can see there, having civilian uh, civilians in the streets uh, bearing flags right there. And of course, that is an ongoing situation. The United States, the international community will often uh, respond to 
such situations as they transpire, especially when they have ties. And in this case, the United States is saying they will not be giving aid to a country that is not, uh, you know, stable. Now, exporters shift market, but rule flight costs uh, tied to completion. Now, clients prefer similar products from Kenya and Uganda as they come to at a cheaper price since exporters from the two are more lenient. Also, we are being told Nam Nam Namibia holds a U um, use of a Sputnik V jab after South Sudan HIV fears. Find out what that means. Also, the reports on the coup are still being um, um, prioritized here in the Rwanda today. We're told protesters took to the streets and blocked roads in Sudan. Let's move on to the CNN. And now we, we are being told uh, about what's happening in their political spheres. White House rejects more executive privilege claims by Trump. Now, Biden has again refused to ass assert ex executive privilege over documents the former president has sought to keep away from January 6th investigators. And that is that day when they had um, uh, in an insurgency right there at uh, in, in the United States, in Washington, where supporters of Donald Trump sought to keep him in power. But of course, that fell flat, and now many of them are being investigated. Also, why Russian and Chinese warships teaming up to circle Japan in a big deal? And also, Rust, assistant director, Rust is that movie that had one of the set um, technicians of, uh, fired at and killed. Uh, now, the Rust assistant director was fired from previous movie. Now, of course, an investigation is ongoing, and Alec Baldwin is the one who fired that gun. But in, in, incidentally, the responsibility might be put on this man, who, of course, uh, is it's not looking good for him if he was fired from a previous set. Also, Mark Zuckerberg responds to massive leak of Facebook documents in tech. That is the news. That that is the latest. Facebook has been facing a lot of allegations and a lot of headwinds. Find out what's going on there. And they're also asking us what's going on in Sudan. If you want to know what's happening there find out more they also they have several um, headlines on that in their international news section they also have ex saudi officials crown prince psycho is a psychopath who boasts of um, killings find out what that is about by taking a look at the cnn website And also, we do love to take a look at our own uh, papers. And in the standard this morning, we are told about um, MPs rolling back their tongues. And very unforgiving title right there. We're told nothing is beyond them when defending their political masters. Though in the process, they rub many the wrong way. But careful not to upset any future allies. Many MPs have taken a back seat. Find out why some of them are quite quiet and some of the ones that are being termed as uh, having rolled back their tongues include Alice Wahome, Kandara Member of Parliament, John Mbadi, South uh, Suba South Member of Parliament, Mili Odhiambo, Caleb Kositani, Samson Cherargei, as well as Kipchumba Murkomen. These MPs were quite vocal and who joining me to discuss this right, and uh, of course, um, in a minute is Arnold Maliba, who's a governance expert, and um, James Gakuya, who's the Member of Parliament for Embakasi North. Thank you, gentlemen, for making the time. We shall get into the discussion in a short while. But to kick us off, let us take a look at some of the stories that are making headlines. Now, we'll start off with election preparations. Politicians engaging in political incitement risk being barred from contesting in next year's general election. Interior CS Fred Matiangi says state security agencies have evidence linking politicians to incitement and will petition the IBC to disqualify those involved from vying for office. Our senior political reporter Richard Janina gets on this on the latest measures that the government is taking in the roadmap to the election. <laughs> With 288 days to go before the 2022 general election, state agencies with a part to play in the elections met with one agenda, the country's preparedness for the preparedness for the polls. Going as planned, at least for the IEBC, which had targeted to register 4.5 million voters by the 2nd of November. So far, only 760,000 people have registered as people have registered as voters. It's a very low turnout, 
I know Kenyans will normally wait until last minute to, to, to come out. So your yeah, last minute now is now because we are closing on 2nd of November. On other fronts, the government says it is all systems go with plans to beef up security during the electioneering period. Uh, shortly we will be um, adding uh, 5,500 police officers who are coming out of college shortly and 300 specially trained cadet police officers who will work and beef up the work of the IBC to conduct the elections. With heightened political activity, some politicians are on the government's radar over political incitement. Where need be, we will be presenting both to the relevant agencies uh, evidence and information we have of individual political actors who are engaged in incitement and who are you know, mobilizing groups of people uh, to disrupt meetings. Matiangi says those involved will carry their own cross. We need to emphasize to our leaders that they will take personal responsibility for some of the actions that they, they get their supporters to be involved in. They risk being barred from vying for public office. We will petition the IBC to disqualify some of these people from uh, contesting electoral offices and uh, we promised this morning that in the event that we have to do that, we will present credible and accurate information to, to the IBC as it were. Security matters aside, the judiciary too is gearing up for the elections. With reports of political incitement and hate speech, the judiciary is looking at setting up courts to deal with hate speech. We are looking at setting up this in five locations, Nairobi, Mombasa, uh, Nakuru, Eondoret, Kisumu, and if need be, we identify other hotspots, we will operationalize a court. The judiciary plans to train 120 judges and 480 magistrates to handle election disputes. Several election-related cases from past polls are still pending in court. And we will ask that our judges or magistrates, under whose dockets those cases fall, will be determined as soon as possible and in any event within 90 days. How to deliver free, fair and credible elections remains the government's biggest headache. And just how to ensure what happens in the conference halls is indeed actualized on the ground may be the first indicator of the government's preparedness to handle next year's polls. Rita Tinina. KTN News. Right now, moving on, the family of the late Agnes Wanjiru, who was killed by a British soldier more than a decade ago, is now calling on the Kenyan and British governments to take urgent action against the soldier in view of new information about her killing. This comes after shocking reports emerged that a British soldier killed and dumped her body in a septic tank at the Lions Court in Hotel in 2012. Our reporter Suleiman Yeri reports on the the new twist surrounding the murder of Agnes. The family of the slain Agnes Wanjiru, which hails from Majengo slums in Nanyuki, Laikipia County, have not had peace since the death of their loved one under mysterious circumstances. Revelations that a British soldier killed her and later dumped her body in a septic tank has rekindled memories of their loved one. According to her elder sister, Rose Wanjiru, the late Agnes Wanjiru left a gap in their life as she had to take care of her daughter, who was only five months old then. Lydia Wairimo, who is a neighbor and a close family friend, is not a happy woman. The presence of British soldiers in Nanyuki is something that she abhors. She wants something done and done urgently. Imeumiza sababu unaona sasa huyo mzungu is kwani aliigiria wapi? Si aliigiria tu kwa kwa gate kama nini? Si wanafaa waride, wakirida wazungu sababu wako na pesa si hata hawana si waridwe tu. Meanwhile, Law Society of Kenya President Nelson Harvey has called on the British government to surrender the soldier suspected of killing Kenyan Agnes Wanjiru for investigations and subsequent prosecution. There could be reason, there could be motive to conceal these egregious crimes and uh, that explains why this particular case has taken long to unfold. And uh, I mean, it's, it's deplorable, it is deplorable. 
So the British High Commissioner must do more than talking. In an interview on the Standard Group's Spice FM Situation Room this morning, Harvey said it was time for British High Commissioner intervenes for the sake of justice. When the story broke out, the British High Commissioner Jen Marriott said the UK government was fully cooperating in the investigations. She also said that the conduct of the soldiers while in Kenya was very important to the High Commission. Suleiman Yeri, KTN News. Now to Nanyuki now and controversial Lamu Senator Anwar Loy Tip Tip who was involved in a gun drama over the weekend was arraigned over the offence. The senator who is facing charges of causing grievous harm to a 32-year-old woman by shooting her in the leg was released on a cash bail of 500,000 shillings or a 1 million shilling bond. The legislator appeared before resident magistrate Vincent Masivo but as Sirajur Rahman and reports the Lamu senator is not new to controversy. Lamu lawmaker Anwar Ole Tip Tip found himself in trouble over the weekend's incident in which he was involved in a gun drama with that two-year-old woman. And this morning, the senator appeared in Anyoki local to face charges related to the incident. The prosecution requested the court to allow them hold the senator for five days to enable them complete the investigations. The police are seeking more time to get access to the CCTV footage as well as obtain a P3 form. We are here to move this court to allow the prosecution to complete the investigations. At the Nuke Great Police Station for a period of five days to enable the police complete the investigation. Your Honor, looking at the application, the prosecution has not laid any compelling reasons to warrant the accused person or the applicant, sorry, the reason the applicant to warrant the, warrant the, the respondent, Your Honor. However, Nanyuki resident Magistrate Vincent Massivo declined a prayer. Instead, he granted the accused cash bail of 500,000 shillings or a 1 million shillings bond. The respondent is banned from visiting, staying in the Shuka County for the next five days. The respondent shall report to the Sub County Criminal Investigative Officer every two days. The Lamu County legislator is not new to controversy. In June 2019, he was involved in a fist fight with an unknown gang at Minifi's Lounge in Kasarani. The senator was fatally injured and rushed to hospital, where he stayed for several days. In another street fight in Lamu, the senator was accused of attacking his opponent, Francis Mugo, during Deputy President William Ruto's campaign rally in Lamu County. The complaint was filed in Lamu Central Police Station and were denied the allegation, terming them political gimmick. The Nanyuki court has ordered the senator to report to the DCI every two days as police continue with the investigations. The case will come up for mention on 1st November. Sirajur Rahman Abdullahi, KT News. And in politics, ODM leader Raila Odinga is defending his social awareness plan of giving out 6,000 shillings to jobless, to the jobless rather, to cushion them from economic hardship. Speaking at various stopovers in Kisumu, Raila dismissed those criticizing his agenda, saying he is aware of how his government will raise the money. Raila, who chose to speak in the lure in all the stops, said with the tightening of corruption loopholes, economic recovery for every Kenyan is a possible dream. Kevin Ogutu with that story. They were in their hundreds, majority of them being youth. No one wanted to be left behind in ODM leader Raila Odinga's Meet the People tour that started in Ahero with stops in Yamasaria and Kondele. Addressing the masses in the Luo, Raila said the time for economic revolution is ripe and the youth will be key ingredient in sparring economy. Baba! At the same time, he reiterated his stand on giving 6,000 shillings monthly token to the jobless youth. Family, 
Odinga also hailed the proposed special economic zone in Kisumu that will attract investors and in the process create jobs locally. Other than that, Odinga told the youth that his government is going to give the youth in small and medium enterprises loans without interest that will be repaid in seven years. <laughs> On the same breath, Raila warned the corrupt, saying it will not be business as usual, as he is keen on ensuring no theft of public funds. Kevin Ogutu, KTN News. All right, now, another bottom left corner of the standard this morning. That story is being uh, highlighted right there. Raila to deal first with graft and then poverty. It says ODM leader tells his Nyanza backyard priority will be to tie, to fight corruption, poverty, and then ensure better health care for all that. And many other stories are covered in the dailies this morning. The Daily Nation is leading with the root of pools of fast one on political parties after he yielded to demand for autonomy by smaller outfits that won't disband to join the UDA outfit, but he could have a the last laugh. That is what we're being told. We'll be digging deeper into these and many other stories that are making headlines on the other side of this break. Do stay tuned.